Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Dylan here where we have a massive update with former first lady Melania Trump and God willing the future first lady Melania Trump, all right? She just came out and revealed the truth about her being a thousand percent all in on her husband's and her return to the White House, all right? With just under a hundred days left until that November election, which Donald Trump has said is the most important day in the history of our nation, all right? And like Elon Musk said, we're at a fork in the road, all right? We are either going to choose the path of greatness, which is Donald John Trump, or the path of destruction and darkness, which is Kamala Harris or whoever the Democrat nominee is gonna be, right? Now, Melania Trump, she is such an amazing Christian, faith-filled woman who's just glowing and beaming with light. And the media constantly attacks her, attacks her, her, her image. Uh, the lady on The View shares a naked photo of her on her Instagram page. They talk crap about her. They talk, ask them about their divorce. And the people on The View say, oh, Melania Trump's, there's probably some money involved. That's why they're together. Super, super strange because this woman is a powerhouse. She's really awesome and she's loving, all right? So we're gonna share the truth today. We're gonna expose the truth. And one of you guys commented on my last videos saying that in the Bible, it says that the truth shall set you free, okay? So here on my show, that's what we do. We reveal the truth because in scripture, it says the truth shall set you free. And before we do dive in and bring Melania Trump onto the show, we're gonna read the Bible and pray because God comes first, amen? Comment amen down below if you believe that God comes first, okay? This is a powerful prayer of protection from Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the most high, who is my refuge? No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him, because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Comment amen down below. Let's see how many of you guys out there believe in Jesus, okay? And now let's get started from Melania Trump, one of my favorite people ever, guys. All right, so first and foremost, Melania Trump is making a massive, massive move and she is actually releasing her first ever book, all right? It's literally just called Melania, which you can pre-order right now. It is going to be a memoir. Her first memoir will reveal stories and photos never before shared with the public. And you can go ahead and purchase this, which I will 100% be doing because I believe this is a sign that Melania Trump is fully invested into you know her path back into the White House. She actually invites readers into her world, offering an intimate portrait of a woman who has served an extraordinary life. And one of the highlights of this woman's life is not only meeting Donald Trump in New York and being with 
uh, meeting him at New York Fashion Week. That's where they infamously met, which we'll get into later into the video because I think it's really, really a cool story. They actually weren't even supposed to meet. It was kind of like divine. And then uh, Melania Trump, you know, her time in the White House's first lady. So you can actually uh, buy this for $40. It's actually a pretty good deal. Or for 75 bucks, she will actually sign it, which for only $35 extra, I honestly think that's what I will be doing. Now, I wanted to share this because again, Melania Trump, this is her first memoir ever, and it's just a sign that she's ready to return to the White House, and she showed up to the RNC. Let's tune in, guys. This is so beautiful. And you could actually see this woman had her ear patched up as well as a sign of uh, unity and support for Donald John Trump. On this journey, I am deeply honored to be joined by my amazing wife, Melania. Yeah. Whole crowd stands up because they want her back. This is huge, guys. Huge, huge, huge. And they actually all started chanting, we love you, we love you. Melania, thank you very much. You also did something really beautiful, a letter to America calling for national unity, and it really took the Republican Party by surprise. I will tell you, it was beautiful. And I'll just read that letter really quickly because it was one of the best letters that I've ever read in my entire life. Melania Trump, she wrote a letter to uh, America right after her husband got shot. And it was so sad. But again, like I said, Melania Trump, she stood up and wanted to, you know, get her word out there and actually show her support. So she said this, I am thinking of you now, my fellow Americans. We have always been a unique union. America, the fabric of our gentle nation is tattered, but our courage and common sense must ascend and bring us back together as one. When I watched that violent bullet strike my husband Donald, I realized my life and Barron's life were on the brink of devastating change. I am grateful to the brave Secret Service agents and law enforcement officials who risk their own lives to protect my husband to the families of the innocent victims who are now suffering from this heinous act, I humbly offer my sincere sympathy. Your need to summon your inner strength for such a terrible reason saddens me. Melania says a monster who recognized my husband as an inhuman political machine attempted to wring out Donald's passion, his laughter, ingenuity, love of music, and inspiration. And boy, oh boy, is he inspiring. The core facets of my husband's life, his human side, were buried below the political machine. Donald, the generous and caring man who I've been with through the best of times and the worst of times. Let us not forget that differing opinions, policy, and political games are inferior to love. Our personal, structural, and life commitment until death is at serious risk. Political concepts are simple when compared to us, human beings. We are all humans, Melania says, and fundamentally, instinctively, we want to help one another. American politics are only one vehicle that can uplift our communities. Love, compassion, kindness, and empathy are necessities. And let us remember, when the time comes to look beyond the left and the right, beyond the red and the blue, we all come from families with the passion to fight for a better life together while we are here in this earthly realm. How beautiful. And then Melania says, dawn is here. Let us reunite now. This morning, ascend above the hate, the vitriol, and the simple-minded ideas that ignite violence. We all want a world where respect is paramount, family is first, and love transcends. We can realize this world again. Each of us must demand to get it back. We must insist that respect fills the cornerstone of our relationships again. I'm thinking of you now, my fellow Americans. The winds of change have arrived. For those of you who cry in support, I thank you. I commend those of you who have reached out beyond the political divide. Thank you for remembering that every single politician is a man or a woman with a loving family. Then Donald Trump continues to say that he was actually might end up using that in their campaign. So beautiful, so, so beautiful guys. In fact, some very serious people said that we should take that letter and put it as part of the 
Republican platform. That would be an honor, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Right? Mr. Congressman? But it captivated so many, so I also want to thank my entire family for being here. Don, Kimberly, Ivanka and Jared, Eric and Lara, Tiffany and Michael, Baron, we love our Baron. Oh, yeah. I was actually wondering why Baron was not in attendance at the RNC. I was wondering where he was. And of course, my 10 wonderful grandchildren, you saw a few of them up there on my lap before. Yeah, that's uh, Eric Trump and Laura Trump's uh, kids. And then that's actually uh, Donald Trump Jr. and Kimberly Guilfoyle's uh, children as well. I actually find it kind of cool that they're not all sitting like right next to each other, like their spouses, because they're all just like so tight knit as a family. It's really, really cool, guys. Um, now, I wanted to share this. Uh, Melania Trump actually recently spoke at a prayer uh, uh, service, and it was a really beautiful speech, and I'll, I've never uh, seen this before. So let, let's tune into this, guys. Not only is she first lady, she's a mother, she's a wife, she is just an amazing person, and most importantly for me, she's a good friend. First lady of the United States of America, Melania Trump. Wow. Look at that. People look, young women look up to Melania. Young Christian women love her, guys. Young Christian women love Melania, and they don't even need it. You don't, they could take down that applause sign because people will applause for her anyways. Look at that, all these young people love her, guys. This is a Christian event. Who better to speak than Melania herself? Wow. Amazing, guys. Thank you, Eric. Good morning. I'm honored to be here today. It takes such a strength and grace to take the grief I know you and Adrian deal with each day and use the loss of your son, Eric, as a catalyst for good. Mm. You honor him every day through the lives that you are saving. I'm inspired by the work you're doing and hope you know that my husband and his entire administration are committed to fighting the opiate epidemic. As the worst drug crisis in American history, his administration has declared it a public health emergency and there are several agencies working alongside the White House to educate and provide services for those affected. That's good. I'm proud to be joined today by Secretary Azar with the Department of Health and Human Services and Secretary Nelson with the Department of Homeland Security. Good. Together with all of you, I know we can make a real difference and save lives. When I took on opiate abuse as one of my pillars of my initiative, Be Best, I did it with the goal of helping children of all ages. I have visited several hospitals and facilities they are dedicated to helping all who have been affected by this disease. Melania Trump, she's actually dedicated a huge part of her life to helping people who really need help, including foster children and those struggling with addictions. And it's so crazy to me that the mainstream media likes to paint this picture as how this woman is sad, she's depressed, she's on the brink of divorce with her husband, there's money involved. I mean, this woman came to America. She achieved actually the American dream. She attained her citizenship legally. You know, she grew up in Slovenia, went to Milan, Paris. Uh, she, you know, working as a super international supermodel, one of the most successful models in the world. And then she went to New York where she met Donald John Trump. And, you know, she's now dedicating her older life you know, the base may maybe want to say the second part of her life now that she's after she worked on herself, built herself up to actually give back, 
right? This is incredibly inspiring. That's why so many young people look up to them, to Donald and uh, Milani, because that's basically what they're both doing. It's now they're spending their later years giving back and trying to set the next generation up for success. It's so, so disheartening and it's so, you know, honestly just so hate-filled that they're trying to take them down because they're great people. Including people who are addicted, babies born addicted, and families coping with addiction of a loved one. What has struck me with each visit is how this epidemic has touched so many people, whether it is because of personal use or that of family members, friends, co-workers, or neighbors. Opioid addiction is an illness that has truly taken hold of our country. According to the centers of disease control and prevention, more than 130 people in the United States die each day due to overdosing on opioids. In 2017, those overdoses accounted for more than 72,000 deaths more than any previous year on record. And in 2016, an estimated 40% of opioid deaths involved a prescription drug. My focus through Be Best has mainly been a neonatal absence syndrome, which are conditions that occur when a baby withdraws from the drugs it was exposed to during pregnancy. But then when, when I was invited to participate in today's town hall, I saw it as an opportunity to speak with all of you as you enter into such a critical stage of your lives. The independence that comes with being a young adult can be exciting, but also overwhelming. Most of you are living on your own for the first time. You may be responsible for paying some of your own bills getting to and from class every day, managing your homework, and I'm sure many of you also have jobs or extracurricular activities. And while I bet no one here will want to admit it, I imagine some of you have or will be experiencing situations with drugs or alcohol. It's so sad, I mean, honestly, like, Dealing with drugs and alcohol is such a lonely addiction too because it's something that typically you're embarrassed of and you you want to seek help But it's just a little difficult, but Melania Trump, you know, she's uh, really tackling the situation head-on Listen to this. This will be from Christian. Go ahead, Christian. Hi, Madam First Lady. Thank you so much for coming today You touched on speaking with Baron about uh, opioid addiction as a mother yourself and, and leading example to countless mothers in the country, what kind of advice would you give to other moms uh, in the way that they should approach a conversation with their kids about opioid addiction? What a great question. What an amazing, great, well-spoken young man. I think the education is the most important and talk uh, with the children and uh, see what's going on in their life, who their friends are. Uh, very important to uh, stay on top of them. Uh, so they don't go in the in the wrong direction uh, that can happen very very quickly This is such a cool uh, event that they put on I mean, this is so awesome that they brought in Melania because she's really quite like the mother of America I mean, she's just so cool We're back. First Lady Melania Trump, thank you so much for, for staying with us for another segment. We have Alex Azar, the Health and Human Services. So if you guys want to watch the rest of it, it's the Liberty University uh, show that they brought her on. But I wanted to talk about this. Melania Trump actually talked about um, Donald John Trump's, um, you know, uh, their journey and their, the, 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 you know, journey back to the White House. Let's tune in. The law. I want to talk about your journey a little more because we kind of glossed over it because you grew up in a small town, Slovenia, and then you're a model in Milan and Paris. You were independent. You were alone at that time. Correct. Now, did you grow up wanting to be a model or? I studied design and architecture and uh, stopped my study architecture um, because I wanted to go in modeling business and professional career as a model. So I moved to Milan and Paris and then and How young were you at that time? I was, I started modeling in Slovenia first when I was 16. Wow! 16 years old she became a model. 
ended up moving to Milan, Paris, and then, you know, eventually to New York. I mean, that, that's just so, so cool. I actually really like this interview with Donald, uh, with, sorry, with Melania Trump with Sean Hannity. Uh, it's really cool. She actually shared, uh, this is a message from the families. Let's listen. Yeah. Um, I watched you as you worked the rope line, as you spoke with the families. It seemed to me that they, they cling to you and they want to send you messages. What are they saying to you? Just they thanking me for the service, that what I do for them. And I thank them for the service. Um, I guess uh, I see that we have a incredible support out there and they see what I'm doing and that I'm here for them and to support them. Yeah, let me ask, so I would say, I told a lot of people I was gonna be interviewing you, there was a curiosity about you. Um, I don't know how you take that, but I think a lot of people know your husband is so outspoken and you've been behind the scenes, but you're making it out more. You went on your trip, you went to what, Nigeria, Ghana, Malawi, I Egypt? Went to, yes, I went to the four countries. I started with Ghana and Malawi, Kenya, and Egypt. I did a five day trip in Africa on all those four countries. So while Joe Biden is spending, you know, 40% of his time as president uh, on vacation, he's going to Camp David, he's going to his Lake Tahoe place, he's, you know, spending time in Delaware eating ice cream, falling off bikes and, uh, you know, getting baked up in the sun on the beach. You have the, the vast contrast. I mean, the contrast is so, so huge between Kamala Harris, you know, not going down to visit the border, where you have Donald John Trump and Republicans, you know, like think about Donald Trump. He's the first president ever to go to North Korea, North uh, to meet, what, meet up with Kim Jong-un. It's like Donald Trump's doing everything he can. I mean, it's it's absolutely beautiful. You know, I just bought, I, I have this book with Donald Trump. I was just look, showing my mom earlier. You know, there's Trump meets with everyone. There's a picture of Trump with Kanye West, picture of Trump with, uh, you know, his family, picture with Trump with the president of China and uh, with Kim Jong-un. He's meeting up with Putin. He's like, Trump just goes out. He does meetings, 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 meets with people, meets with people, talks with everyone. I mean, it's like, he meets with people that he doesn't necessarily like, but he wants to at least shake your hand. I mean, Trump is, uh, you know, it's just the difference is ast it's, it's astounding. Now, this is actually uh, Melania talking about her meeting Trump and her time in the White House. Let's listen in. Yeah, you're now traveling, but you end up in the biggest city and you told the story about how you met the president. Um, when did you know that he was the one? Did, was there a moment? We had a great chemistry when we met yeah. in 1998. How cool. And uh, we, uh, we started dating and, uh, you know, we, we dated for a long time before we got married and we got married with had the son. Um, but Guys, I got Trump books all over my house. This was, this is the one I'm reading right now, Trump, The Art of the Deal. The other one I have is called Our Journey Together or something. It's a much bigger book, but this one is a really good read. If you haven't read this one yet, Trump, Art of the Deal. The great chemistry from the day one. Yeah, did you, was there a moment that you realized, wow, small town Slovenia, now I'm the first lady of the United States and I'm living in the White House. Was there a moment that you realized this is real? It's incredible, especially when you think about it, uh, your life, where you were born and, and all the steps you took. I took a lot of steps. It's not just like you end up here. Uh, you learn a lot on the way here. And um, in my business, in fashion business, it's, uh, it's a tough business as well. And uh, here the politics, it's as well, it's a tough business. And you need to have very thick skin. Yeah, what's the Love that so much. And now I wanted to share this because uh, they're actually trying to cancel Melania Trump right now. So if you make it to this, you know, point of the video, you'll see this part of the video. But they're trying to cancel Donald Trump and Melania Trump right now for what Donald Trump said during his interview with Elon Musk. Let's turn, let, or sorry, conversation with Elon Musk. Let's, let's listen in. And uh, actually, yeah. she looked very much like a great first lady, Melania. She looked... She didn't look. Yeah. She didn't look like Camilla. That's right. But of course, she's a beautiful woman. So we'll leave it at that, right? He actually did something that was impossible. Both sides hate him. 
you know, both sides. Yeah. That was a hard thing to do, unification. Uh, this is it where he was comparing this, this poor... So, Time Magazine, guys, put Kamala Harris on the cover. I mean, what in the freaking... What is wrong with her? Kamala Harris is probably the worst person to be on the cover. And Donald Trump said that this painting of her, you know, she actually looks good in this because it's not a, it's not an actual image of her. It's a painting. And she said, she actually kind of looks like Melania in here. <laughs> and so now the media is going after her for saying, oh, Trump says Kamala Harris was made to look beautiful, look like beautiful wife Melania on Time Magazine cover. I mean, it's just so strange. The, the portrait they're trying to paint, no pun intended, of of Melania and Donald Trump. I mean, they're really trying to go after them when, when in reality, I mean, they're such a really cool, beautiful couple. Listen to this, guys. International cover girl has now joined us. We got um, to discuss the media. How did you two meet? Uh, we met in New York, um, 1998. It was a fashion week, September 1998. The famous fashion week. The fa they actually weren't even set to meet. This is a cool story. It was fashion week. We were introduced. Well, no, we were both at the same party, and uh, that's how we met. He like came to right me. Away. I went crazy. I said <laughs> I was actually supposed to meet somebody else, and oh. there was this great supermodel sitting next to Melania. And I was supposed to meet the supermodel, and they were saying, "Look, there's so and so." I said, "Forget about her." Who's the one on the left? And I was more you like him right away. So he was set up with on a date to meet basically Melania's friend. So it was like divine chance that Donald Trump actually met. If you haven't watched this interview, uh, you definitely have to watch it because it's so cool with a Larry King. And this was back from 2005. But yeah, guys, I mean, Melania Trump, you know, she's releasing her book. They're trying to cancel them. But she's coming out and speaking and saying, hey, look, you know, we want to unite this country together. So let me know your thoughts on this. I think Donald Trump and Melania Trump, they are really, really ready and gearing, you know, in full gear for November 2024. So let me know your thoughts down below. Take care and God bless.